Hello and good day viewers. Have you ever done tasks that are time consuming and while you're doing it, you're unable to increase the scale and complexity of your IT operations and cloud infrastructure? Now in the modern IT world, speed is of the essence and if you are lacking, you might fall behind very fast. Well, everyone is in luck today because at Asia Online Publishing Group, it's conducting an interview with an expert from the field of IT automation. Now, my name is Akmal from Asia Online Publishing Group and here we have Stuart Sarich, the Systemizer Techniques Director of Client Solutions, Design and Delivery. So how are you, Stuart? I'm good, thanks, Akmal. How are you? Okay, I'm good as well. So uh, for your information viewers, Stuart has over 20 years of experience in high-performance computing operations and he's very passionate about quality and customer service. Having him here today will give an in-depth and better understanding of how important IT automation is. Now, before we go into a deep discussion on the topic itself, um, Stuart, can you briefly explain to the viewers today what IT automation is all about? Uh, yeah, so IT automation is the same as any kind of automation really, like in a factory, in a manufacturing cars, for example. Um, it's simply removing the effort from human beings and putting it onto machines, in this case computers and software. I see. So, I mean, it's safe to say that automation is the hot topic in companies nowadays, so everyone is doing it. So, um, let's start off with the first question. Um, why should companies automate their IT infrastructure processes and what are the benefits that they stand to gain? So, um, some of the obvious benefits of automating your IT infrastructure are things like uh, increasing performance of your processes. Um, software is a lot faster executing tasks than a human being who has to do all the typing. Um, along with that, you get uh, reliability, of course, as well, because if you're not typing, then you're not making typing errors. Um, it also gives you the opportunity to do more with what you currently have in terms of uh, human resources, for example. Um, one of the situations that I found myself in in my past career is where you get into a situation where you're so busy putting out fires and fixing things that you don't have time to make improvements. And because you can't make improvements, things keep going wrong, so you have to fix them. And you find yourself in this sort of vicious circle uh, where you can't kind of break out of it. Um, Breaking out of that circle, well, you could hire a lot more staff, that would do it, but obviously in these uh, cost-constrained times, that's not necessarily possible. So the way um, I've dealt with it before is by finding tasks that are repetitive and kind of, you know, people are doing them all the time and automate them, get them out of the way. And then that frees up people's time to make improvements and just generally make the entire operation more smooth. See, so I mean, I guess it's pretty clear that there are a lot of benefits in going into IT automation. So, uh, moving on to the next question is, um, why should they build towards enterprise-wide automation, and what's the best way to achieve that? So, enterprise-wide automation is instead of finding a particular process or a task and then automating it, and then moving on to the next task and automating that one. It's taking more of a holistic approach. So it's looking at the entire kind of business workflow end to end and making sure that any efforts you put in here are not going to hamper anything that's going on over here. So everything becomes kind of connected and um, sort of mutually beneficial. So it's about looking at the whole thing, not just kind of isolated use cases. Um, alongside that, is there's a, a kind of culture change and a sort of mindset change uh, required. So rather than developing a process and then automating it, you kind of start from the position of automating everything. And with that, you kind of shift your focus a little bit and see benefits where perhaps you wouldn't see them if you were looking at just isolated pieces of your uh, operation. Yeah. See, so it has to be Basically, companies have to look at it in a, in a whole way so, food, yeah. so that it can work. Absolutely, end, end to end, and then that, gives, that means that you don't have any gaps between your kind of automation efforts. I see. All right. So, well, um, on that and on companies doing that, um, recently there has been a news circulating about, about companies facing project failures when doing IT automation. So, what are these companies uh, doing wrong? So, um, 
Automation projects failing, I think, is probably a little bit of a uh, kind of strong word. Um, I'm not sure I've ever seen an automation uh, initiative uh, fail entirely. Um, I have seen them uh, take too long, um, cost too much money, and perhaps not uh, deliver quite the results that uh, people were expecting. Um, I think there are a number of reasons uh, why that happens, but rather than looking at why things fail, I think it's probably more constructive to look at you know, projects that go right. Um, key things for me uh, around automation projects are collaboration. So often when we're helping customers to automate, it involves lots of different teams in their department. Um, so it's absolutely critical that everybody who's being touched by the automation or everybody's um, area of responsibility that is involved, it's critical that they are all on board with the project. So they need to understand the objectives, they need to understand uh, the solution itself, and they need to work together to kind of get it done and make sure that it works end to end. Um, alongside that, of course, you do need support from the very top as well. Um, you know, it has to be driven by senior management, otherwise, uh, yeah, it doesn't necessarily get the uh, momentum behind it that it kind of needs to. So collaboration um, and support, I think, are two of the key things, really, for an automation uh, project. For, for a project to go in there as well as it can be. Yeah. Right? Of course, you also have to have very clear set objectives um, and a good plan. You know, nothing works without a plan. That's true. Uh, speaking of plans, actually, so, you know, these things can, you know, get a bit complex. So, um, you know, IT automation sounds like a complex system because, you know, it is for companies to implement with the news about, about these um, failures or mistakes or, you know, and so on. Um, however, Ansible is said to be, uh, to make things as simple as it can get for users. So, um, can you give examples of how easy it is to automate using Ansible? Um, yeah, so uh, Ansible is a very um, accessible uh, tool. So the automation is built in uh, what are called playbooks using a language called YAML. Uh, YAML, yet another markup language it stands for. Um, but it's human readable. So you don't need to have a background in developing code uh, in order to start building automation. Um, and that's really important because what that does is it opens up the automation to teams within the IT organisation that wouldn't necessarily have had access to that kind of thing before. Um, so unless you, you know, unless you were a Python programmer, you probably haven't done a lot of automation. Um, so by having this uh, very simple human readable language, it means that everybody can get on board, um, democratising automation, we call it. Um, another key aspect of Ansible is that there is a huge amount of pre-built content and these are uh, things like roles and modules and plugins and what these do is these allow you to execute tasks on a device without necessarily knowing how to actually execute that task. Um, that sounds a little bit counterintuitive but um, if I give you an example, let's say um, somebody has a, a Cisco switch and then uh, elsewhere in their environment they have a Juniper switch. Um, the operating systems for those switches are quite different. Uh, the command syntaxes are not the same. So if you want to, um, let's say, change the speed on a port on both of those switches, if you don't know the particular language, um, that's quite difficult. With Ansible there are modules for both of those manufacturers and what you can do is just call that module and say I want to change the, the, the port speed to this. So you can actually execute that change on that device without knowing the detail of how to do it. And that's quite powerful indeed because it allows people to um, interact and manage devices without having had to you know, do weeks and weeks of training to understand everything in depth. So it gives you a much um, much broader control, so suddenly it's not just the network teams who have been using these devices for years who can make changes, it becomes uh, possible for anybody to do so. So somebody like me, so to say? If... Absolutely. Oh, man, that's that's yeah. interesting. So, um... well, I have to say, you know, I've been a manager for a very long time now. Um, it's been a long time since I would call myself technical, but even I can build automation so. using Ansible. 
So that means it's 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 very user intuitive in, in, in a way. And you you spoken about all the contents that that are in Ansible itself. And uh, on that uh, to question number five. Now Ansible is an open soft source platform that's widely accessible to anyone, and it's it's not even charged. You, know, you, you guys don't charge a single cent. So um, that's that's amazing. So why should companies? Choose the Red Hat Ansible Automation, a platform that requires payment compared to those that do not require you to pay. In a sense, what does Red Hat bring to the table? That's a, that's a very good question and one that I hear uh, quite a lot from uh, potential clients and indeed existing clients. Um, essentially, the uh, open source community edition and the uh, enterprise Red Hat edition, they both perform the same function. Um, there are uh, web-based browser interfaces for both um, and there is pre-built content for both. Um, essentially, uh, my advice to customers is, is something along the lines of this. Um, if you want to use Ansible in a kind of development environment, um, non-production, non you know, maybe you only have one or two people who are going to develop the automation, then the community edition is absolutely fine. When it comes time to putting that automation into production, um, managing systems that you know, deliver services to your customers, then perhaps you should think about uh, the Red Hat uh, Enterprise version. Reason being is that that comes with the Red Hat support. So you have access 24 seven to you know, some of the uh, world's foremost experts in Ansible. Um, which, if you're using it to manage your production environment, that's absolutely critical. Right? Um, the last thing you want is if your production systems are down, having to go onto a forum and ask you know, the community, well, oh, can you help me with this, please? No, you, you need to be able to pick up the phone and speak to an expert. Um, the other aspect, uh, along the similar lines, is that with the Red Hat Enterprise version, you get certified content. So. Uh, the community edition, there's lots and lots of content modules, playbooks, roles written by, you know, just normal people. Um, with the enterprise version, that content has been certified by Red Hat and by the uh, principal vendor as well. So, for example, my earlier example of the Juniper switch, there is uh, content that has been certified by Red Hat and by Juniper. So you know it works, it's been tested, and critically, it's supported. So there are no questions uh, about, oh, you know, you, you call the vendor and you say, okay, yeah, my switch is not working. And they say, okay, well, what have you done to it? Oh, I've used this uh, open source software to do stuff. Well, oh, no, that's not supported. So with the enterprise version, you get that kind of peace of mind. Um, everything end to end is supported and backed by uh, Red Hat. So basically everything is it's just everything is verified and we get the support from the Red Hat team which is you know what companies need when they move on to something when they move on to something bigger. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean if you're if you're using Ansible to manage critical systems, then you know the peace of mind that comes with certified content and enterprise level support, those two things are really good. They that's, allow you to sleep at night. <laughs> that's good. That's good for you know people who are running these things. Um, so moving on to uh, the last question, um, there are major differences that users should take note of uh, those two platforms. Um, now, um, can you tell us a bit more about Systemizer technique and what sets you apart from other companies that offer similar solutions? Yeah. So Systemizer has been around since uh, two thousand eight. Um, and Systemizer started by uh, providing kind of what I call classic uh, or traditional data center services. So hardware, software, and uh, support services. So like an extended warranty. Um, about a year and a half ago, uh, the company decided to refocus and move into uh, automation, uh, having seen that it was uh, becoming a priority for CEOs and CTOs. Um, what, what kind of sets us apart, I think, is that background in the traditional infrastructure. So we understand how data centers operate, we understand servers, storage, networking. So when we come to automate uh, a customer's infrastructure, we understand it. So we have the multi-platform expertise, so by multi-platform I mean Windows, Linux, Unix, 
all flavours of all of those. Um, and I think that gives us a really good grounding. So, you know, when we're automating, we're automating these kind of devices, um, you know, software, that, you know, hardware that we used to sell, software that we provide. So automating it is not necessarily too difficult for us because we have that kind of intimate knowledge. Um, we also have lots of uh, long-standing customers um, for whom we've done work in the past. And because of that, we know their operation well. We know what their business challenges are. We know how their infrastructure looks and interacts and you know, the different data centers that they have around and maybe they have branches, you know, kind of edge computing and stuff. So that gives us um, a bit of prior knowledge that makes the automation uh, projects that much more smooth. So the systemizer has the background to know, to know how these things work. And from there, um, I guess customers have the comfort of knowing that with yes. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, because we've worked with these customers before, you know, they understand and appreciate that you know, we're dedicated to delivering the right solution for them, not the most expensive one we can possibly sell them. Um, that's not what we're about. You know, we're about kind of delivering um, solutions to people's challenges. You know, um, I like to say that um, you know, if your workload requires a pickup truck, yep. I'm not going to try and sell you a Ferrari. You know, I'd make a lot more money if I sold you the Ferrari, but it's not the right thing for you. So. Yeah, we try and find the right solution at the right time for the right price. That's great. So, um, all right, that's all we have for today. Um, thank you, sir, Stuart, for having us. And um, we hope to see you next time. All right, thanks for watching. Thank you.